As innovation and technology expand the financial marketplace, older financial institutions face the challenge of whether they can thrive in this new environment. Banks, of course, will continue to play an important role in the bank of trust built up with clients over decades and deep market knowledge. But is that enough? Earlier this week, I was joined by David Lin, head of corporate bank at Deutsche Bank, to explore this more in detail. And I began by suggesting to him that it might be fair comment to say that banks need to step up their tech innovation in order to survive in transaction banking. And asked him to outline some of the key trends to consider. So I think survive is a bit of too of a strong term, as you alluded at the start. Uh, we here and all international banks have long-standing client relationships. Uh, we have balance sheet and capital to commit to people, and we really holistically know the client's needs, right? Um, so survive is probably a little bit mm. too strong. But there is uh, tremendous changes in technology, and there's tremendous changes in technology companies that can help us do that fundamentally, right? Uh, so that will allow us much greater client uh, solutions, uh, much greater speed and efficiency, and much greater cost capabilities, right? So I think at Deutsche Bank, we look at that in two places. One, we are replatforming our whole core platform, and that's moving inherently onto the cloud with our partnership with Google and NVIDIA. Right? Uh, secondly, there's a whole bunch of fintechs and, and providers that we can partner with. So we're looking to really partner with people. So a couple of examples of that that we've announced in the last few months, we're partnering with a company called Taurus to build our digital asset custody capability and our tokenization capability. Uh, in Asia Pacific, we've uh, partnered with a company called Data Mesh that has excellent solutions around uh, merchant solutions, a growing part of our business, but particularly in the Asia region, in different countries where the underlying infrastructure need is quite different. So those are now going into live production in India and Korea to start and will expand across the region. So really you have your core infrastructure and then you really have on top a whole set of partnerships that you can create, right? Mm. Ultimately we would see that as sort of having our own set of microservices or if you think about it almost like a Deutsche Bank app store, right? And we can create some of those apps ourselves and we can port some of those apps ourselves and then linking those together for our client solutions uh, is the future. And can you give some examples of, of how this relates to your area of responsibility, particularly uh, with the bank's trans transaction banking area? Yes, so if you think about our business, and, and that's true for transaction banking, whether that's across our corporate cash management, our institutional cash management, our security services business, big chunks of our trade finance business, and our business banking business in Germany, we are a massive transaction processing platform you know, millions of transactions a day throw through our pipes, fundamentally, right? Uh, so we said, we have the sort of core platform build in terms of moving that capability on cloud. Uh, that has huge advantages. Clearly having what's called in the industry on-prem servers means that we need to have those all around the world. Uh, you usually over capacitize because you don't know what your growth is going to be. We move to the cloud, we have infinite compute capacity, infinite storage capacity, but even more importantly, we pay for use. Mm. So we pay for the consumption we put in place, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so those are some examples. Uh, another example is really our front-to-back capability. So we're partnering with a company called Actimize to really increase and change our transaction monitoring capabilities. It's an inherent important part of our AML responsibility, which is incredibly important. Uh, and really that allows us to, again, move on to cloud, uh, have a large amount of data, data storage, and much faster analytics to look at our client transactions and make our bank and the industry safer. So multiple examples of where that's coming into place. You've mentioned Google Cloud. Uh, that seems central to Deutsche Bank's uh, a transformative innovation strategy. But it has been a, a while since that partnership was announced. So what, what are the expectations there? Uh, so we are clearly about a year and a half ago announced a 10-year partnership with Google. So they are our main cloud provider uh, globally. So that translation onto the cloud in terms of data or applications is very important. Right, as we discussed, that gives us compute power. But if you think about all of the new fintechs and software as a service providers, they run on cloud. They don't run on, uh, on traditional servers. So our ability to plug those applications, as we discussed earlier, onto the cloud is very important. Uh, 
Um, the partnership with Google also allows us to co-innovate. Uh, we're working on a number of things around uh, data management in terms of uh, predictive capabilities. And now in the last few months, really spending a lot of time looking at uh, machine learning, but particularly the buzzword of the time, artificial, artificial intelligence, right? So we're working closely with uh, Google on their beta version and, and soon to be released version of enterprise AI, right? Mm. It's extremely important that from an enterprise AI that sits within a data firewall from a corporate point of view. We can't afford our client data, our data to go out into the, the wider spectrum, uh, which a number of the other AI platforms have the more uh, sort of online allow you to do. Uh, but those things are quite transformative. If you look at our client uh, investigations, you look at our operations front to back effectively, these will allow us to close in and faster process using artificial intelligence. Uh, it's very early days of that. Um, I think, honestly, it's a little bit over height. Um, and in the early days, it will be definitely a human assisted function. So the artificial intelligence will just make our, make our people much more productive rather than allowing the AI to purely run our, our processes without guidance, right? right. Um, but the, the upside of that uh, human assisted function will be very strong over the next few years. So. Mm, speaking of hype, this year the hype is around AI. Five years ago, it was blockchain, right? Uh, uh, distributed ledger technologies. Is it time to rein in those expectations that we had back then? It, are there still sufficient use cases to merit investment? Yeah, I think, the, I mean, if we, if we think back, probably the hype was a bit too much. And, and if you look at the actual translation of the financial industry onto the blockchain has been probably relatively slower than we would have thought about five years ago, right? Um, the way we think about distributed ledger, ledger technology uh, is very useful when there's multiple people involved in the processing, right? So if we have a client, just us, us and them, we can have a fairly traditional processing platform. We don't really need distributed ledger, ledger technology. But then when you have a sort of multiplicity of users, having one single record is, is very powerful. Mm -hmm. The technology of the DLT is uh, increasing in terms of speed and capability, and you would have seen some of the changes of the Ethereum network, et cetera. Um, the move to what we would broadly use the term tokenization, uh, so digitalization into tokens, uh, will occur. As I discussed earlier, we've already invested quite heavily in the digital asset custody and the tokenization space. We're spending a lot of time looking at what the, the future of tokenization will money will occur. Um, the one area of the financial system that we're seeing actually the quickest change in using those technologies is really in the fixed income and currency business, so settlement around repo or around clearing. Uh, and with that requirement within our ICM business, creating treasury services, we will need at some point a tokenization of money to be the other side of the transactional process, right? Um, but it has taken time. You know, if you look at like the trade area, there's some good localized examples of using DLT technology. There's a great advantage fundamentally having one immutable record, taking in areas like the customs areas of, uh, of countries, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what the world hasn't managed to do quite yet is really link those networks together. So they're quite singular in a Singapore or a Zurich or, a, or a southern China has quite a lot of them, but they don't really join together mm. in what is a sort of global network, right? If you look at a shipment of oil going from Rotterdam to Singapore on a tanker, it may change hands 10 times in that journey. There may be 10 different <laughs> owners and changes of LC. Um, so it will expand, but I think it uh, will take a little bit of time. Uh, we do think that the tokenization and the DLT process has quite a lot of advantages in terms of instantaneous settlement, so atomic settlement as its term, uh, and definitely the ability to create smart contracts uh, that infer effectively the contract, the information is embedded in the tokenization, which will make instantaneous operational settlement and a much greater efficiency. Mm. David, it's been such a fascinating conversation and Thank we you. have to leave it there, but we so appreciate you taking the time to stop by to chat with us here at Cybos. As David Lynn, head of corporate bank at Deutsche Bank. Thanks for joining us. Good. Thank you. Pleasure.